um, thank you everyone. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I would like to uh, thank the organizers uh, for giving me this opportunity to present my work uh, in collaboration with my colleagues that are based in France. Uh, it was Theoaris, Olivier Ishu, Fasos, Achilios, and uh, Professor Eris Kokos, uh, who is based uh, here in South Africa. Now, uh, let's start uh, with uh, the general context of my uh, presentation, which is um, mechanical lattices. And uh, I have to mention that uh, mechanical lattices have for a very long time been used as a uh, textbook example to study classical waves. However, nowadays mechanical lattices are designed to study uh, interesting wave phenomena. And here I'm showing you three modern examples of um, mechanical lattices. And uh, here on this part, I'm showing you a chain of uh, spherical granular beads. And here I'm showing you a lattice uh, composed of uh, pendula. And here I'm showing you a, an origami lattice uh, made from uh, origami, which is basically from the realm of uh, metamaterials. In mechanical lattices, uh, there is, uh, we can have um, control of uh, wave propagation by tuning some uh, parameters uh, such uh, that can be uh, dependent on the model. And in addition to that, uh, we can also uh, exploit uh, the uh, inherent nonlinearity uh, that may be present in some of these uh, mechanical lattices. Uh, here I'm showing you uh, some uh, examples uh, where this last property of nonlinearity uh, has been uh, exploited. Uh, here I'm showing uh, an acoustic diode, and here a, a, a soliton splitter. Now, in all these uh, models, I have to mention that um, usually um, they can be modeled as uh, mass spring systems, and we have uh, uh, basically central forces. And uh, now we ask uh, the question, what about dynamics of lattices with uh, non-central forces? And in addition to these uh, non-central forces, we are also going to add uh, 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 second nearest neighbor interactions in the potentials. Now to uh, uh, investigate this question, uh, we are basically going to uh, uh, look at the dynamics of uh, localized initial uh, excitations, uh, mode excitations under the influence of nonlinearity in, in lattices uh, with uh, non central forces. And uh, also, I'm going to look at uh, the chaotic behavior uh, of uh, such systems and also uh, uh, look at uh, the energy occupation in such a uh, in such a uh, uh, lattices. Now my uh, presentation is going to be take this format. Uh, I will first describe the model and I'll probably describe uh, one or two spectral properties of this uh, uh, lattice of these lattices with the non-central forces. Then I'll go on to uh, talk about uh, energy spreading uh, or destruction of Anderson localization. Then uh, after that, I'll, I'll talk of uh, energy equipartition. Then I'll talk of uh, the chaotic behavior of, of, the, of these uh, systems. Then last but lastly, I'll, I'll make some uh, conclusions. Here I'm showing you a schematic of uh, the model where each site is represented by black uh, points and um, uh, each, um, point uh, is able to move uh, uh, perpendicular to the x-axis, uh, like uh, um, in, 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 in contrast to what we normally uh, uh, see in uh, other mass spring systems, such as the harmonic uh, oscillator, where the uh, motion is along the uh, axis. And here we have uh, 
to the relative uh, displacement zeta n, which we can write in this uh, manner. And here we assume uh, for a small angle, this, uh, this is uh, the valid uh, relationship uh, that is uh, for relatively small, uh, that, that is what we have uh, for relatively small angles. And uh, here we can also uh, get uh, the uh, Hamiltonian uh, where we have uh, the kinetic energy part and the potential energy part. And uh, I have to mention that uh, this model describes uh, bending of flexural waves. So it is uh, uh, experimentally uh, relevant uh, to this model. Now let us consider some uh, spectral uh, properties. Uh, in this case, uh, 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 from this, uh, uh, we start with an infinite uh, homogeneous uh, linear chain. So basically, uh, we get uh, uh, the equations of motion if even if we go to the Lagrangian, then by assuming uh, solutions to these equations of motion, we get the expression for the uh, uh, dispersion. And here I'm plotting the dispersion uh, curve and on the vertical axis, I have the frequency and on the horizontal axis, I have uh, the uh, wave number. Now let us consider a finite uh, mass uh, disordered uh, chain. Uh, again, we are still linear. So when we uh, formulate uh, the eigenvalue problem from the uh, equations of motion, we get uh, uh, the frequency spectrum, which I'm plotting here on the vertical axis is the frequency. And yes, uh, on the uh, horizontal axis, it's an index uh, uh, for the mode. And here we have a chain of, uh, which is of size 256. And uh, like what we uh, normally uh, obtain in uh, disorder systems, uh, all the low frequency modes are extended and uh, high frequency uh, modes are localized. And here on this, uh, on the right part, I'm showing you some uh, profiles of uh, this mode. This is uh, a localized mode, uh, which is um, shown by this uh, uh, red curve here. Now we introduce some um, non-linearity uh, into the linear Hamiltonian that I uh, described earlier on. So what we are uh, doing here, we are now adding, uh, in addition to these uh, 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 terms with uh, of the potential with uh, zeta uh, squared, I'm now adding these terms with uh, that are cubic and quartic to so have a non-linear Hamiltonian. So basically it is more like a toy, um, um, model that we are studying here. So we play around with the configurations of the nonlinearity, and here we are uh, diff making uh, different combinations. And here are this uh, first uh, configuration, which is H34, where we have uh, uh, zeta cubed, uh, zeta squared, and uh, zeta cubed, and zeta to the fourth. Then we have H3 where we have uh, in the potential, we have zeta squared and uh, zeta cubed. Then in H4, we have in the potential zeta squared and uh, z to the, uh, zeta to the fourth. So in order to excite uh, the system, uh, we are going to be studying uh, these um, different cases of the, uh, uh, of, of the system with these different nonlinearities. So basically uh, to study, uh, or rather to initialize uh, the system, we are going to take uh, uh, this um, highly localized mode, uh, which is uh, mode 252, and we are going to carry out uh, uh, single side uh, uh, excitation. So basically we are practically exciting uh, this mode uh, 252. And we, uh, as we uh, use uh, uh, excite with uh, uh, very low energy, we will be uh, in the near linear regime. As we increase the energy, we become more and more nonlinear for all these uh, three cases that we uh, uh, see here. So here I'm showing you a typical evolution of the system. 
with uh, uh, symplectic integration, this is H4. So basically the rest of the uh, simulations were more or less like this. So I'm just here showing you it uh, just uh, to um, give you an idea of what we are doing. The, uh, the Hamiltonian obviously is autonomous. So here I'm now showing you uh, the results uh, for energy spreading for the three uh, uh, cases that I have. And um, for all these three cases, I'm using the same energy, which is uh, 0 0.2. And here I'm showing you uh, H3 and uh, H4 and H34. So on the vertical axis, uh, we have time. And on the uh, horizontal axis, we, it's an index of uh, the uh, size of the lattice. Uh, for this energy, uh, we can see that uh, the dynamics of uh, H3 and H4 are similar and uh, they start to uh, spread to the rest of this lattice. And here I'm showing you, since I said we are exciting uh, a, a highly localized uh, uh, site, uh, which is 187, we see this uh, a black curve, which gives the mean position of the energy distribution. So you can see the mean position of this energy uh, distribution or density, it moves towards the center, meaning that um, the energy is now uh, distributed uh, equally uh, amongst all the sites. Whilst in the case with H4, it remains uh, localized around the uh, excitation site, as we see here. Now, to uh, describe uh, the uh, the, 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 the spreading, uh, we use uh, uh, the participation number, and here H is uh, the normalized energy which we normalize in this manner. And uh, I have to mention that uh, uh, the participation number takes a value of one when uh, a, only one site is highly uh, excited, and it takes a value of N when all sites are highly excited. and uh, we just, uh, it's more an, another way of uh, quantitatively looking at these results at this energy 0 0.2. Uh, we uh, see that H3 and H34 uh, are practically the same, whilst H4 remains uh, localized. Now, let us uh, now look at uh, the statistics by looking at uh, uh, a, a bigger. Uh, energy range other than just looking at one energy. And uh, here I'm showing you uh, uh, results uh, for uh, 30 realizations where we have uh, uh, the error bars here given by uh, this, uh, uh, for this energy. So uh, what we see is that uh, for H3, it uh, uh, sort of uh, saturates, uh, reaches an asymptotic value of around 125, uh, which is the mean participation number here. And whilst uh, H4 remains uh, localized, and uh, the results for H34 are practically similar to what we, uh, what we have for H3. That's why I, I, I don't show them here. Now let us uh, go to uh, something else, uh, which is, um, uh, energy equipartition. Now, uh, we are going to uh, discuss um, uh, whether, since we are practically exciting um, uh, any, a, a, a normal, a single normal mode uh, with the way we are exciting our systems, and uh, here uh, to, uh, to, to go to uh, the mode space, we are simply uh, projecting uh, the displacements at each given time onto the uh, vector of uh, uh, modes, which are given as columns in this matrix, and uh, the velocities at any given time, and we project them onto the vector of uh, modes, which are given as columns in this uh, uh, matrix. So we basically have uh, uh, this relationship uh, for the normal modes. And uh, what I'm starting with uh, for H3 here is I'm using uh, uh, as an initial, uh, as my initial energy, I'm going uh, with an energy of 10 to the 4, which is practically very low uh, as compared to what we, uh, what I was using uh, in the previous cases, which is yes. energy 0.2. So what it simply means is that I'm very, very almost in near linear. Uh, so if we excite the system in that way, 
uh, we see that we if uh, most of the energy remains uh, in this uh, mode 252, uh, of course, uh, maybe I could have uh, uh, done better with my visuals here. So it, most of the energy remains practically, but remember the energy is very small here, 10 to the minus four. So basically we have uh, most of the energy remaining in this mode 252. And uh, when we increase the energy to now uh, 0 0.2 from uh, 10 to the minus four, we can see that uh, around 10 to the four, uh, Practically, we have uh, other modes being excited equally as well. Other, instead of just having mod 252, uh, which is excited here, yeah, we excite practically all other modes. And um, at uh, this energy, uh, uh, 0 0.2, we show here the results for H4. And in H4, you can see clearly now that uh, the energy is higher, that uh, all the energy, uh, uh, or, or rather, we have. Um, most of the energy being on mode 252 here. So basically, uh, we can see that uh, H4 is, uh, we did not, um, we did not attain energy equipartition for H4. Now let us uh, uh, go back to, uh, to, 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 to some quantitatives of, of this entropy and here, uh, we to do that we um, use the normalized uh, spectral entropy, which is uh, defined in uh, such a way that it takes values between uh, zero and one. And uh, whenever we have a, uh, a value of one, it means uh, since we are exciting uh, a single mode, we have uh, a single mode uh, that is uh, we have not. Uh, yet reached equipartition, when you go to uh, zero, that means uh, the initial uh, mode that we had excited, uh, it means simply means that all modes are now uh, sharing the initial energy. So uh, we also uh, compare our numerics with the analytical value uh, at equipartition, which we can obtain uh, from this relationship where C is the Euler uh, constant. Uh, you can check uh, from these references how this um, uh, numerical value of uh, the entropy at equipartition is uh, uh, was uh, actually also used in these papers. And uh, when we uh, do that, uh, we see that um, we, our, our numerics um, uh, um, agree with this um, analytical value, which I'm showing by this uh, dashed line here. And uh, what uh, what we can also see from these uh, results is that uh, indeed H34 and uh, H33 uh, uh, have practically the same results. And uh, whilst in H4, uh, we we remain close to zero uh, to one rather, which means that we we still have uh, uh, more or less uh, dynamics from the uh, that are similar to what we initially excited. Moving on, now we do the uh, uh, statistics uh, of a range of energies uh, from 0 0.05 to 0 0.3. And uh, again, uh, the results uh, show that uh, H3 uh, quickly uh, reaches uh, equipartition, whilst uh, even uh, for higher energies uh, beyond uh, the 0 0.2 that we uh, uh, show, we shown uh, be, be in the previous slides. Uh, H4 remains, uh, um, does not reach energy equipartition. So uh, that's uh, one of the, the, the differences for this module. Again, uh, we, I'm not showing the results for H34, which are practically the same uh, for this, uh, for H3. So I'm just uh, uh, showing uh, this uh, result. Now I move on to discuss uh, something else, uh, which is um, uh, different, uh, which is uh, chaos. And uh, here I'm using an indicator, the, which is the finite time uh, maximum Lyapunov of exponent. And uh, for this uh, indicator, uh, we know that uh, regular uh, dynamics, uh, they go to zero uh, following a slope of minus one. And uh, whenever we have chaos in the dynamics, uh, we attain some finite values. So basically for the, an, an energy of uh, 0 0.2, we see that uh, 
the dynamics uh, uh, show chaos, uh, which is, um, and also for H4, we uh, have uh, chaotic dynamics. And um, towards the end, we see that H3 and H4, they have practically the same uh, value of uh, the uh, finite time maximum Lyapunov of exponent. So we can uh, say that all systems are chaotic, but the degree of uh, chaoticity is uh, different uh, in, the, in, in these cases. Now, uh, instead of uh, discussing chaos uh, from a, a global perspective, we can now uh, try to understand uh, whether we have uh, 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 chaotic spots that are moving uh, within the lattice, or, or rather we have just a single chaotic spot which is uh, within the lattice. So to do that, we use uh, uh, the deviation vector distribution, which is defined in this manner. And here I'm showing you a spatial temporal uh, plot of uh, this um, deviation vector distribution. And I'm taking some snapshots uh, at these times, uh, uh, which are indicated by these uh, horizontal dashed lines. And uh, these snapshots I'm now is what I'm now plotting here in B. And here on the horizontal axis um, uh, is an index for this uh, lattice of uh, 256 sites that we have. So from these uh, uh, results of, uh, of, of uh, the um, uh, spatial temporal uh, uh, plot, we here I'm also have uh, the mean position of this uh, uh, DVD, which is uh, clearly uh, meandering throughout the lattice. So basically, uh, we can also uh, confirm this result by looking at uh, these uh, snapshots, which we see that. Uh, the, towards the end, they are now moving uh, to, throughout the lattice. Now let's consider the results uh, for H4. And for H4, uh, again, taking some snapshots and uh, we see that um, uh, towards the end, uh, we have uh, uh, the, 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 the DVD, DVD is localized uh, around the initial excitation site, which we can see clearly from this, uh, peaks of, uh, of the snapshots, which are, which remain in, uh, in a single place. Now, moving on, uh, let's uh, now uh, go on to uh, the statistics. And uh, here, I'm now sh uh, showing uh, the statistics of uh, the uh, maximum of the average uh, of the uh, maximum Lyapunov exponent, the finite time maximum Lyapunov exponent over a range of energies from 0 0.05 to 0 0.3. Uh, what we can uh, see uh, is that um, H3 is uh, in general uh, more chaotic uh, as compared to H4. Remember the two systems at energy uh, 0 0.2 were all chaotic, but here we can see clearly that uh, H3 is um, uh, more chaotic when you compare it to H4. And uh, the results for H34 are again uh, similar to what we have for H3 there. In conclusion, uh, we can uh, have, uh, we can summarize our results to say that H3 and uh, H4, in terms of equi energy equipartition, of course, uh, we reached uh, uh, we reached energy equipartition uh, faster as compared uh, than in H4. In the similar in the time frame that we carried out these simulations, we did not um, reach energy equipartition. In, in other words, uh, the initially localized excite the dynamics remained around the initially uh, in initial excitation point, and um, the system uh, rather shows uh, localized uh, chaotic dynamics uh, for H four, and uh, that's. Uh, all, and I would like to thank um, UCT for the uh, postdoctoral scholarship and also the uh, Oppenheimer Memorial Trust uh, for the uh, International Postdoctoral Fellowship. And uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. Okay, let's thank the speaker. Are there any questions, comments? Okay, well, thanks again for the talk. Um, we shall reconvene tomorrow, same time, 2.30 p.m. Moscow time. So, uh,
Thank you very much. You guys worked really hard today. So uh, enjoy the rest of your day and see you all tomorrow. All the best. Bye bye. Thank you.